everyone, the Snowman here, and today I've got my 2019-2020 NBA season preview. I'll give my predictions on how the standings shake out in both the Eastern and Western Conference, and then look at playoff matchups, give some predictions at the end. Uh, if you haven't checked out my Clippers, Lakers, or 76ers team previews yet, please check those out if you have time too. But today we're looking at all 30 teams, and we'll uh, take a look at what I have for the standings. So as I pull up my projected standings here, this is how I have things shaking out in both the East and the West, uh, 1 through 15, and two very distinctly different looking conferences. Uh, the Eastern Conference, really, there's two Titans and then everyone else. You've got the Bucks and the Sixers at the top. That's pretty widely agreed on. Uh, they're the two teams to beat. Western Conference, though, a lot more good teams, a lot more depth. It's going to be a dogfight for the playoffs. And I want to start off with the Western Conference and go through, uh, say a little bit about each team. So number 15, I've got Memphis, and uh, they're one of two teams I'd actually be pretty shocked with if they make the playoffs in the West. Um, you know, Conley and Gasol are both out now, but they have found their unicorn of the future, the fourth pick of the 2018 NBA Draft. That was Jaron Jackson Jr., only 19 years of age and the first rookie last year with 53s, 50 steals, 50 blocks, and 50% or more from the field. So youth is going to be served in Memphis with uh, with Jaron Jackson Jr. and John Morant getting on-the-job experience. Okay, then I have Phoenix and like Memphis, some good young pieces. They've got the dynamic duo of Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, new head coach Monty Williams. I also like them bringing in Rubio, who should stabilize the backcourt, Dario Saric as well. The West is just too deep for them to make the playoffs, but uh, certainly they'll, they'll be another fun team. Okay, let me get to number 13. I've got the Kings and pretty much every team from here on up. I could see making the playoffs. I feel really bad about this though. If the Kings were in the Eastern Conference, they'd probably be a four, five, or six seed. But uh, they just missed the 2019 playoffs last year as the nine seed, their best record since the 06 season. I don't love the coaching change, getting rid of Dave Yeager, bringing in Luke Walton. Uh, they did play at the third highest pace last year, though. So expect them to play very fast with their youthful core, De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, and Marvin Bagley. Then just above the Kings, I have the Timberwolves, who are going to be paying a lot of money to Andrew. There is no way there are 100 players in the league better than me, Wiggins. Uh, he was reacting to ESPN's player rankings with that. But no, I, I only have the Timberwolves above Sacramento because of Carl Anthony Towns, who put up 24.5 points a game last year, 12.5 boards, 40% from three. He's going to be a fantasy freak this season. And uh, even though Timberwolves might not win a lot of games, he could uh, make another All-NBA team. Should be a very weird season ahead then for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Probably the biggest changes of any team because Russell Westbrook is out, as is Paul George. Pretty much the end of an era there, but they are built for the future with 15 first-round draft picks over the next six years. Also two pick swaps thanks to the uh, Russ and PG trades. They brought in CP3, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, Danilo Gallinari. So still have enough uh, pieces to be an interesting Western Conference team. Then as my 10th team in the West, I've got the Spurs who will be putting their 22-year playoff streak on the line. Haven't missed the playoffs since 1997. And I think if Pop can make the playoffs with this Spurs team this year, uh, he's the greatest coach of all time because it's just going to be, a, like I said, a dogfight in the West. They've got some youth now though, so that's the good news. Derek White really impressed in the seven-game playoff series last year against Denver. Uh, Lonnie Walker and DeJounte Murray will be returning as well. But uh, though the history is on their side, I, I think the present is going to be a, a tough task for this team led by DeRozan and Aldridge to make the postseason. And then the last non-playoff team I have in the West, the New Orleans Pelicans. Like the Thunder, tons of draft capital for New Orleans uh, from their Anthony Davis trade. I just think they have a lot of good players. Uh, Lonzo Ball, Drew Holiday, J.J. Redick, Etuan Moore, Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, Derek Favors, Jaleel Okafor, and then two young prospects in the uh, Jackson Hayes and Nikhil Alexander-Walker. A lot of good rotation players, so I think they'll be competitive too. But uh, sadly, J.J. Redick's playoff streak will come to an end. His 13 for 13, uh, I, have it, I have it coming to an end this season. Now, the Dallas Mavericks, I do have in the playoffs. They're my eighth seed, and this may be a little biased. I'm not a Mavericks fan, but I just want to watch Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis play with each other as much as possible this season. I want it so badly. Doncic, 29.6 usage rate last year which was the highest for a rookie in the 42 years of keeping that stat so we're going to see a lot of the point guard again this season hopefully 
Uh, KP is healthy after the uh, the ACL tear. Has we haven't seen Porzingis play since February 2018, so some question marks there. But those two together, along with Boban too, for uh, some comedic relief, is going to be great theater. Then my seventh seed, the Golden State Warriors, and the good for the Warriors is uh, we might see nuclear Steph launching from 35 feet this year again. His stats in 2016. Uh, if, if you forget those, 2016, before KD arrived on the Warriors, Steph had over 30 points a game that year, and he was also just off the charts with his efficiency, 50% from the floor, 45 from three, and 91% from the free throw line. D'Angelo Russell should fit in pretty nicely offensively. Draymond's going to get more, a lot more looks as well, but the defense is just going to be very porous without Klay Thompson uh, for you know the large portion of the year. We've got some ragtag big men filling in. No more KD, no more Andre Iguodala. So there'll probably have been a lot, a lot of shootouts, games like 140 to 137. Then the Portland Trail Blazers, 53 wins last season. Dame took it to another level in the playoffs, knocking out OKC. CJ McCollum, we know his offensive game smooth as porcelain. Uh, I like their young center, Zach Collins, as well. This is a professional team, the sixth seed. I see uh, Portland making the playoffs again. Now, Utah's a very interesting team. Offensively, they should be leaps and bounds better than they were last year. They're no longer going to be solely relying on Donovan Mitchell. Uh, last season, when Mitchell shot 45% or better from the floor, the Jazz were 32-5, and five, so heavily dependent on his efficiency and offensive production. Now they add a true point guard, though, in Mike Conley, along with Boyan Bogdanovich. Should be above average on both the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. We know how good they are in stifling uh, on the defensive end with Rudy Gilbert anchoring the defense. My four seed, the Lakers. Yes, LeBron missed 27 games last season. Uh, he finally didn't look like uh, Superman. But the good news for him, he finally had a long offseason, time to relax and rest and heal up. And we know he's going to come back with a vengeance. Anthony Davis, though, going to be an absolute game wrecker, a true MVP candidate. They're going to be a great pair together. Uh, I only don't have them as a top three seed because Braun may coast at times. But seriously, Davis, he, he said he wants to win Defensive Player of the Year. He, he's also going to be in the running for MVP as well. Then at three, I've got the team with the highest Vegas over under in the Western Conference, the Clippers, who obviously brought in Kawhi and Paul George. They keep most of their depth as well with guys like Lou Williams, Montrez Harrell, Landry Shamit. Only concern for their regular season would be the load management. Uh, Paul George likely out the first month. With the uh, shoulder injury, Kawhi missed a lot of games last year too, just kind of easing him along in the regular season. But uh, in terms of paper, this is maybe the most talented roster in the league. And then my two seed, the analytics-loving Houston Rockets, who scored 42% of their points from three last year. So uh, the question for me is how will Russell Westbrook mesh into the system? I think he will be able to do so uh, just fine. The numbers won't be as fun or gaudy from both Westbrook and James Harden. They'll probably take away uh, from each other a little bit of that shine. But the relentlessness every single night from these two guys, they don't take many nights off. I think uh, it's going to be good enough to get the two seed having the, the combined might of Russ and Harden together. And then my number one seed in the Western Conference, the Denver Nuggets, 54 wins last year. They were the youngest team in the playoffs at 24.9 uh, average years of age. The future is so bright in Denver, though, brought back most of the team, including the top five MVP candidate from last season, Nikola Jokic. Also add Jeremy Grant and uh, Michael Porter Jr. finally healthy. So they may need home court as well coming into the playoffs uh, in, in terms of that mentality. So they're going to be going for it every night. I expect the Nuggets to pick up you know, nearly 60 wins this season. All right, switching back over to the Eastern Conference now, and I'll try to go quicker with them because there's a handful of teams that are just not as exciting as the teams in the West. And a lot of bad teams, maybe none of them worse than the Washington Wizards, who I have as my 15th best team in the East. Uh, John Wall likely out all year with the Achilles injury. You're going to see a lot of Bradley Beal, uh, Will the Wizards fans, who led the league in minutes per game last year with almost 37 minutes a game. They just gave him a two-year, $72 million contract extension. So Beal basically the only bright spot for Washington. Just ahead of the Wizards, then, I have the Cavaliers. Not too much to be optimistic for Cleveland fans. Uh, they do have a new coach, but it's going to be an atrocious defense. Uh, question for the Cavs, will they look to sell Kevin Love, January, February, towards a trade deadline. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of struggling, though, for the Cavaliers this year. Ahead of them, then, the New York Knicks, who basically had a laughing stock of a summer, struck out on all the free agents that they wanted to try to get, so they ended up uh, using that money to sign four power forwards, which didn't make a whole lot to, 
a sense to me. Uh, I don't think that's a winning formula for David Fisdale's squad. If I'm the Knicks, though, I'm just focusing. They do have a, a, a couple good young players. I'm just trying to play R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, Kevin Knox, and Frankie Smokes as much as possible and uh, and see where that takes you. The Charlotte Hornets, then, another team I'd have low expectations for. I guess, what, they're my, my 12 seed. A uh, few young guys with potential to make leaps this year. Uh, Dwayne Bacon, Malik Monk, maybe Miles Bridges. Very bouncy athleticism. Uh, mostly, though, going to be the Terry Rozier show. And I uh, I'm really don't think the Hornets have a shot at making the playoffs. All right, now at least we get into some uh, semi-exciting teams. The Chicago Bulls. I'm expecting highlights galore from Laurie Markkinen, who I believe will be a borderline all-star in his third season. Maybe even make it the uh, the third-year player from Finland. Has a very interesting game. Uh, he can score from a lot of places in the floor. Has to, has to really shore up his defense. Doesn't get as many blocks as he should for a seven-footer, but... I like, uh, I like the Levine and uh, Markin in partnership in Chicago. For the Atlanta Hawks, they'll be led by second-year point guard Trey Young then, who had a great second half of 2019, almost averaged 25 points a game, 44% from the floor, and nine assists throughout the entire second half of the season. Only problem, the uh, team defensive rating was 114.8 with Young on the floor. That would equate to the second worst in the league. So that's a, that's a big problem there. DeAndre Hunter, their first-round draft pick, will help, but I think at times it's going to be way too easy for opposition to score on Atlanta. Then my final non-playoff team in the East, the Orlando Magic, who still have a gigantic front court imbalance. Uh, they've got a lot of good big men, not as many guards. Markel Fultz could be the solution to that. They need guard play, though, athleticism, and Fultz is playmaking. Uh, they won 42 games last year. I'll say they win in, in the high 30s this year, but do not make the playoffs as they did last season. And for Detroit, I'm predicting another season stuck in NBA purgatory. They've got zero playoff wins in the past decade. However, they've also never drafted higher than seventh in the lottery over the last 10 years. So it's almost like they've got too much talent with Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond and Reggie Jackson to tank, but not good enough to threaten the top dogs in the East. That's why I have the Pistons finishing eighth. And now a very interesting team uh, just ahead of them is seven in the seventh spot. Toronto Raptors, who still should be pretty good without Kawhi Leonard. Will they be sellers or buyers, though, halfway through the season? Does Marc Gasol stay on this team? Without Kawhi last year, they were 17-5. and That uh, equals a 63-win pace, though. Very good team defensively, and they just extended uh, their man Pascal Siakam four years, $130 million contract. Also, Lowry got a one-year $31 million extension. They're building around Siakam, and uh, look, they, they still got a lot of experience, and they'll, they'll be a solid team this year. At six, I've got the Heat taking a pretty big jump this year. Last season, I kind of viewed them as a team with a lot of, you know, a nice collection of role players. And as a team, the Heat were really good in the first three quarters of games last year, plus 0.5 point differential through the first three quarters. But then it seemed to all fall apart in a lot of fourth quarters for them, minus 0.7 then point differential in the fourth. So basically, they were in a lot of games, but they lacked a closer. And that's why they brought in Jimmy Butler this offseason, the 12th highest fourth quarter score from last season they've got the depth they've got the balance now they've got a star i'm expecting a surprisingly successful season from miami this season now the boston celtics are hoping for some ewing theory here addition by subtraction with getting rid of kyrie irving they bring in kemba walker maybe they can get back to their free-flowing offense that we saw in the 2018 playoffs i uh, did lose al horford and aaron baines as well though so they're going to be pretty bad defensively uh, still though more talent on paper for boston than three quarters of the eastern conference at four then a team that made a lot of headlines this offseason the brooklyn nets bringing in kevin durant and kyrie irving kd saying he loves the system the offensive system in brooklyn that's why he came to this team same with kyrie which uh, is kind of puzzling because i'm not sure you're ever going to find a better system than the one that durant was playing in in golden state uh, but nevertheless they take a lot of threes they play pretty quickly a lot of talented guards, uh, you know, four out, one in lineups with Jared Allen at center. I'm not 100% convinced that Kevin Durant won't return uh, this season. So hopefully for him, we see him maybe April, May come playoff time. But I think it'll be a pretty good regular season for them. Kyrie's going to probably be hot the first half of the season. And uh, yeah, Nets should get the four seed. Okay, then moving from Brooklyn to Indiana. That's a big aesthetics change because Indiana, they are more of a heavyweight slugger who want to grind you out. It's not a pretty game that they play. They were the third best defense last year, though. Forced a lot of turnovers. Also gave up a ton of free throws, though. So a lot of stoppages in the clock. I like them adding Malcolm, Malcolm Brogdon. Only question mark, how long till Oladipo returns from his ACL injury? You know, if it's a couple months, then 
they're still going to be just fine in the regular season. They're going to be a tough out, though. Uh, and that's why I have them uh, finishing pretty highly. Okay, finally, we get to the important teams in the East and the top two. And at the two seed, I think it'll be the 76ers. Yes, yes, Ben Simmons needs a jump shot. He was 3 for 28 last year from 14 feet or deeper. But I've got faith that he's going to continue to work on that. And overall, I think with Philly, the length and switchability defensively, adding Al Horford and Jason Richardson on defense, they will stifle and they can adapt, play a lot of different lineups. Joel Embiid, obviously the superstar there. They should, uh, they should be just awesome this season. And then the number one seed, this was easy, Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, league high 60 wins last season, bring back the MVP Giannis. They've now got both Lopez brothers, also uh, Chris Middleton back in the fold. Almost every player on this team can launch from deep. Coach Budenholzer, the reigning coach of the year. And uh, I just want to mention it again. They've, they've got Giannis Antetokounmpo. So, you know, another 60 win season probably in the cards for Milwaukee. All right, now a quick look at my playoff bracket. Uh, so according to my standings, this is how I see the playoffs shaking out. We'll start with the West. Uh, I think the future is going to be on display in the 1-8 matchup. Denver defeats Dallas in six games. Uh, Lakers over the Jazz in five. Then it'll be the Paul George Revenge Series with the Clippers and Trailblazers. Uh, you know, obviously Lillard ending the Thunder season last year in PG's eyeball, but uh, George able to exercise some demons there. And there's going to be a lot of demons being exercised if things go uh, according to my plan here because we also have the 2-7 matchup, Houston-Golden State, another revenge series. That's the Warriors who have knocked out the Rockets for the last five postseasons. This is probably the one series I feel the least confident with. I uh, wouldn't, you know, I could see the Warriors beating the Rockets easily, but I'm, I'm going to have faith here in Harden and in Russ in the playoffs and say they take out Golden State in an epic seven game series. Uh, then back at the top, Denver, Los Angeles. I've got the Lakers defeating the Nuggets. Bron's got more experience than that whole Nuggets roster combined. Uh, Clippers over the Rockets in six. PG versus Russ. That's going to be a fun, uh, fun matchup. And then the clash of Titans in the Western Conference Finals. LA versus LA. I think Bron's been waiting for another crack at Kawhi since the 2014 NBA Finals. He wants to uh, reassert his dominance and prove he's the best in the league, though. So give me the Lakers in seven. Then on the Eastern Conference side, it'll be back-to-back -back sweeps for Milwaukee over Detroit. Uh, they'll win that 4-0. Boston-Brooklyn should be entertaining. Uh, that'll be the Kyrie Bull. Give me Boston in seven. Jimmy Butler then going to be clutch in the 3-6 matchup, Indiana versus Miami. I've got the Heat in seven games there. And then uh, more revenge for the 76ers against the Raptors. Obviously, it was Kawhi and Toronto that ended the Sixers season in the Eastern Conference semifinals last year. But Philly rolls there in five. Milwaukee, Boston then. I've got Milwaukee in five. Uh, Miami, Philly, not much resistance there. So it'll set up Milwaukee versus Philly in the Eastern Conference finals. And maybe I'm being optimistic here with uh, two conference final series that go seven games. But that's what I've got here, and I've got Philly taking down Milwaukee. I just think the, the Sixers have lots of guys to put on Giannis. They could throw Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, Al Horford, whoever, at Giannis. And uh, defensively, it's a good matchup, so I like that moving forward. And that's, uh, that's why it sets up my Lakers versus Sixers NBA Finals matchup. And give me the Lakers in six games. I think LeBron reclaims the throne, and the Sixers, to me, just one year away. I think their time is coming. Uh, Simmons, though, 23 years of age, MB 25. Their time is coming soon, I, I promise. But uh, I'm going to say the Lakers win the 2020 NBA title. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. Leave a comment. Let me know who you've got winning the title this season. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much. See you around. Cheers.